clan i hope you're having an awesome sunday and have had a great productive week um yeah it's been an awesome week here i've been here, here's my my little public service announcement it's been such a long miserable winter that i'm trying to make sure get outside do the outside things get some fresh air i even you can't see it because i'm scottish and so pale that i kill the white balance on my camera but i even have a tiny bit of a suntan so if you're self-employed trying to build your own business for yourself make sure and take some time off get outside um see some fresh air and some sunshine it's totally made the difference yesterday because now finally in scotland we're allowed to drive to different places in scotland we're not allowed to stay overnight or do many things but we're allowed to drive to different places in scotland so i went off to the clyde and i did a teeny bit of paddling i'd say i was letting the dog swim and i kind of followed her but yeah i did a teeny bit of paddling so i hope everyone's okay having an awesome week uh, let me know what you've been up to what you've done with your week and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be needle felting a puffin well having the usual daft conversations and everything else this is the makers monthly subscription box not sponsored but there's a link in the comments below to this box and we will be making if the camera will there we go a needle felted puffin um I so say you can sign up for this box um, and you get one box a month, but you can sign up and cancel at any time. And for the month of this month, for the month of April, couldn't remember what month it was. For the month of April, it is the Puffin. Um, someone Can someone in the chat let me know what's next month's box going to be? I don't remember. But this month's the Puffin, so if you wanted that, you could sign up with the link below not sponsored get your get your hands on a puffin and if you don't like next month's one you can cancel before it happens or you can come back every month and join us and felt along together <clears throat> oh excuse me the voice might be croaky today <laughs> Um, I am now on industrial strength antihistamines to stop the eyeballs doing eyeball things and it feels like I'm breathing broken glass and fire just now. Wonderful. Um, but yeah, if you can let me know in the chat if everything's working fine, what you've been up to. I know a few of you have been in the Zoom calls getting a head start on making the puffin. As I said, this is through the makers. So they have their own Facebook group and their own little community where they all get a head start on the puffins. Um, Eva's in the house. It does look like we're live. That is cool. Um, we're just going to start in a minute. Um, Diana's here. Hi there. Alicia will be with us soon. Cool. Um, Alicia is hosting the Zoom meetings where people felt along together. So it'll be exciting to see where everyone's got up to with their puffins. And I'm excited to make a start. They are super cute little birds. Um, and I've never made one. I've made very few birds. So this will be fun. Um, kind of excited if, if you're not following me ben my fuzzy lugs on facebook um that's the facebook page i just posted asking i want to see your curly haired critters and um i just found out that um not only do you get poodles and curly haired dogs you get curly haired cats i knew about you get curly haired pigs you also get curly haired horses so i think using my my trademark um proprietary curls um because I, I do have a method for making curls there is a video on that my my trademark curls i think we have to make a curly horse at some point um Bridget's in the house and she can hear us awesome thank you so much Heather's in the house and Carol hi Pam and the crafty clan <laughs> hi there Carol thank you all so much for joining us my voice is not going to make it today <laughs> Bridget hi crafty clan I really have to get some kind of a, a logo or something for a crafty clan or I have to felt something with a little tartan bonnet or something <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Um, Erica's here as well. Hello, guys. Good to see you all. Right. Um, just before we get started, I do have a quick sponsor for this show. If this works. Um, 
this today's live stream is sponsored by amazon music um with with my link which is an affiliate link so that means i get a little bit of something if you sign up with this but if you sign up for this you get three months amazon music unlimited for free um it's valid until the 24th of may so you've got like over a month to figure this out. Um, Amazon Music Unlimited is Amazon's premium music streaming service offering customers unlimited access to 50 million songs, including the latest and greatest albums, thousands of playlists and stations. You can stream or download songs to listen to offline and it's all abbed free. You have you also have access to exclusive voice over control on Alexa enabled devices. When we're talking while we're talking about Alexa, Alexa, don't forget to subscribe to Pam Duffy on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, if you want to sign up for that, like any Amazon thing that you've got your three months free, but don't forget to cancel at the end of that if you don't want to roll over and get charged. Um, but if you click on my link, no extra cost to you. I just get a little thank you from Amazon for it. So that's <laughs> that's the sponsor bit to dealt with. Um, let's pop that away. Um, oh, Alex sitting watching with our new puppy. Oh, fantastic. What what puppy have you got? Oh, jealous. Right, let's let's get a start into seeing what's in the box. So this is the maker's box of the puffin. How cute is that? I hope I can do it justice. Oh, oh it's a tight pack one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Didn't want to open. And here's our usual little Oh, tutorial, oh, tutorial for a daisy chain. How cute. I was just thinking, oh, that is adorable. Um, yeah, I was just looking at the daisies thinking as, as a kid, how we used to sit out in the in the fields and just make daisy chains. Um, and here's the little newsletter. Oh, three little pigs next week. Yes, of course, three little pigs. And then Jean's a Dartmoor pot pony and july is an elephant and calf so the entirety of my family will love that um everyone's mad about elephants so july you've got to stick around for july or sign up sign up for july here's my instructions crafty beginner level and he's going to be 25 centimeters tall Oh, excellent. <laughs> the feet are already bended. That's that's good news. Um, and we've got, we've got a bit of pipe cleaner and a bit of wire and the tape. I think this is florist's tape in orange to make his feet. Uh, <laughs> um, alpaca loopy, loopy locks, just our little free sample. That is so cute. Um, um, that's everything and we've got his eyes that won't be needed for a while so remind me it's going into the sewing box but here's what we got so that's that's our cool little selection i love the colors look so cool don't they um, <clears throat> So we have <laughs> a tiny bit of yellow to do that little bit on his beak, orange for the rest of his beak, a dirty white, feels like a core probably, and then a brighter white, and then some black. So let's, oh, something smells lovely. <laughs> Um, Alex, she's a cross between a Jack Russell Border Terrier. Awesome. She's going to be fun. She's going to be trouble. Brilliant. Oh, Bridget, new member. Oh, thank you so much for joining channel memberships. That gives you, you have, well, firstly, my, my little dog gets some extra snacks this month. I, she doesn't. I, I, feed, <laughs> I feed them all the time. But little snacks for my dog. And you get some little um icons to use in chat um if you do 
your two little dots and then type Mia you'll get to see <laughs> you'll get to see one of my little my little stickers that you get to put up in chat right let's let's get started um uh, it's a life-size Atlantic puffin a favorite of British seabirds I agree it's absolutely gorgeous um okay nervous right um Oh, break up nine centimeters of the green wire stem with wire cutters. I, do you know, I just said I to myself, I wonder if I'm going to need wire cutters. I do. Like, I bet you the scissors won't cut it. Nope, that's not going to happen. Okay, so I will wire cut it later. I'm just going to bend it at nine centimeters and pretend. Um, uh so four centimeters will be covered the remaining five centimeters will remain uncovered i had a sharpie here uh there we go so i want to see what four centimeters looks like which is about to there so just marking off all that and i'll trick because i don't from what you guys were saying in the zoom last week the beak takes up all the time so anyway um okay the sticky wool take a strand of the creamy and wrap it round the end so i want to wrap this four centimeters until it becomes about one centimeter thick Alicia's saying, Bridget, how did you get it to let you join finally? Oh, that's brilliant. Um, Alicia, sorry I'm late. We've been zooming and making our puffin feet. I'm looking forward to trying the, the puffin feet. Um, Bridget worked out how to join on the computer, not available on the iPhone. Ah, good to know. Thank you. Yeah, um, YouTube has all sorts of things you can do in one place and not in the other. And did I can't see if the stickers and things work for for Mia because I'm using a different app. So let me know if it worked. Um, but thank you so much for joining in. I'm just going to felt this a little bit. You could add a little bit of some kind of tacky to get this. <laughs> oh, Carol's got all the seen all the doggies that members can use. It's just a bit of fun. <laughs> I would let everybody use them, but I can only actually add them for members. So there you go. That's that's your that's your perk as membership. I might at some point. Um, I can do like live streams just for us or things like that, but I don't want to leave other people out. Um, if that makes sense. So yeah, let let us know if there's anything you would like for members or if you're happy with with what we've what we've got I, I appreciate you anyway it's, it's a bit of fun it's just a little something else that YouTube offers us okay next you'll build up okay so right I had I had a felting mat I want to do what I'm told but oh, we do have one we have this one <laughs> um, next you'll build up adding lanolin above and below the wool wrapping so i'm making a, a rounded triangle yeah, i can do that i think <laughs> let's let's see how this works the widest edge of the beak is four centimeters use the template. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Oh, use the template. Okay, so I'm, I'm not too far off just now. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Head, beak, all the rest of it. So where's everybody? I know Alicia said you're doing the doing the toes on the zoom where's everybody up to with their puffin or if you started it or if you're you're not <laughs> not going to make the puffin oh let me know i think they're very cute and um, we'll see how we get away with <laughs> alicia pam will do what she's told really i'm not sure if i believe it no look 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 
felting mat being being good it's easier to do slightly flat shapes like this sometimes on a felting mat it's not far off the right shape <laughs> Smooth out this edge. Um... Oh, Bridget, that's weird. I get to see your little. I I am not even sure what icons you've used, but I get to see what ones you've just used there that are all blue to me. But I can't see the the my dog ones that I've created. <laughs> I just see you've it just says it says Mia, Ben, Molly, King Charles, Spaniel. <laughs> I have to make some more of them. Um, Oh, Alicia, you're still Zooming next Saturday, so you can still join in and get your puffin kit if you want. Right. Okay, I've had enough of using that. <laughs> Let's get back to what I know. It would be much easier if I could cut off this just now, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Carol's is still in the box looking <laughs> at her. Yeah, some of these big bird projects are a bit daunting because they're so detailed and so cool um i know the owl was a lot of work but so worth it really super uh, and yes i am jabbing the wire into my top to hold it in place so that the beak doesn't slip out um alicia's made the beacon feet oh yeah i saw i just saw your post on facebook that alicia's made some sand sand Eel, sand elves is that how you say it that are sparkly for his beak cutting them in half yeah so they hang out either side of his beak brilliant idea because yes they are <laughs> famous for having stuff hanging out their gob all right how are we doing for size it's it's a bit big just now but i'm happy if it's got a bit of a bigger size or my light box is just behind there and it's just started to lean <laughs> so if it goes suddenly very dark we know that's fallen over um, Lorna hello there um Bridget you've got weird ones microscope microbe universe but no dogs ah yes that's <laughs> That's what I saw, microscope and micro, very strange. Um, Andrea, hello there. And Diana, your puffin has beacon feet so far. <laughs> His legs are sitting at the top of a mug waiting for the glue to dry. Brilliant. Um, oh, Pamela, you're in Oregon, so the box hasn't reached you yet. Hopefully soon. I think the... <sighs> I think the post isn't too bad. I hope not. Um, Lorna's nearly done. Just needs wings. Fantastic. Oh, there's my wire. I don't want it to stick out too far. Right, am I supposed to make the beak as fat as that? <laughs> Guys who've done it already, is the beak supposed to be that fat? Let me know before I, I move on. Um, but anyway, I've got this. What does it say? Um, work on the beak to form a slightly tapered shape that's more rounded. The widest part, yes. Um, And the beak needs to be felted quite firmly. Yay, I get to do one firmly. <laughs> Alicia, I figured out you meant hi. Hi, USA, Pam. <laughs> um, the beak is the only part of the puffin that is felted solidly. <laughs> Make the beak the size of the grey, it's very narrow. Um... Oh, right. D okay, more, more. Okay, so um, I'm too fat. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> oh. Really, really wish I'd remembered to bring bolt wire cutters up. <laughs> 
<laughs> Alicia is very, very firm, like you love. <laughs> I don't know, not mine. Mine aren't all very. I suppose it depends. Everybody's different with how how firm they felt. Mine aren't rock hard. So something I want to ask. See, seeing as we have a load of filters here, um, I wanted to ask you all because I've heard people have said in the past that if you felt too firmly, then you can cause the fibres to break and it ends up getting softer again. Has anyone ever felted that <laughs> that firmly that they've ended up breaking fibres and it's gone soft? I've, I've sat for like ages trying to prove the point and felt it, but I've never managed to do it. Um, Alex, yeah, don't start yet as the little four-legged rascal keeps finding fluff and it's a great game. Can't wait to do the puffin. Yeah, um, oddly enough, with my dogs, I found they absolutely loved the fleece to start with. So I, I made a couple of balls. I made a couple of dog toys deliberately of the wool and... Yeah, they got totally bored of all. I I thought it was a it was a risky thing to do, um, and it would make them think that all wool was a toy. But no, immediately they took it. They had like one play, and then just went nope, <laughs> not interested in wool, and they've not touched it ever since. So that might be an interesting tip, or it might be a dangerous thing. Um. Bridget, oh, you're still doing doing a dragon. Dragons are way more important. Although puffins are quite adorable. So fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed this works out okay. All right. So that's about the right size. So I'm going to make a... I'm going to move on because as I felt, I kind of felt things up for, more firmly. Um, once the beak is, add a little black and a half moon... Keeping white showing all round. This area should also bulge out slightly. <laughs> Gone quiet. I'm really concentrating here. Um, yeah, this is like totally out of my, my wheel zone. I totally don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> But yeah, if this area has to bulge out a little bit, I need to build it up a little bit. And for anyone who's not felted before and you're kind of seeing me twizzling the needle and stuff, it's before. don't ever move the needle once it's stabbed into something. All I'm doing is there's some fluff some loose fibers and then I just catch them up by twizzling the needle. <laughs> um I'm not I'm not moving when it's actually inside the piece because that's the good way to snap needles. <laughs> right, just had a minute there, turned it round and I'm going, which way does it turn if it's a mirror image? <laughs> that is so random, just like totally going like I could just sit and make the curve go the totally wrong way and you'd all be yelling down the screen at me. Um, Bridget saying that's lovely having a new dog. It is indeed. Um, <laughs> Pamela's dragon's also in process as well. Yeah, dragon was definitely a big project, but it was good fun. Um, Alicia, those people are crazy. I assume you mean the ones that say that you can felt stuff stuff so firm that it stops being firm again that sounds very weird um at least you felted it so hard you basically can't get the needle in so i think it's one of those things people say think they're smart yeah absolutely and what it could be as well it's it's one of these things i actually just released a video on wednesday about it it's chinese whispers people hear it from someone they think it's an expert and so they'll just pass on that advice. They'll, you know, be like, oh, Pam said, which I don't think I ever said that, but I might have done. Um, you know, Pam said this thing. And so they keep on passing it on without ever testing it. Um, there's there's lots of that with everything. There we go. Part one. 
Oh, and then now use the red orange wool to cover the remainder of the beak, leaving a tiny white area between it and the black. Um, oh, oh. So it's going to cover the top as well. Right, got it. Okay. Um, reading and th reading out loud and thinking about what I'm doing at the same time because I just totally forgot to leave the white gap there. Uh, there we go. Reading out loud and felting is tricky. <laughs> that is a gorgeous orange colour. And the red doesn't go all the way down at the bottom by the looks of it. So much easier. Remember and have wire cutters so that your wire isn't absolutely hitting on everything. It's clashing into the mic. It's hitting me. Yeah. <laughs> I was so annoyed because I did. I said to myself, I wonder if this needs wire cutters. Should I ask people if this needs wire cutters? And then I didn't. Or I could have also opened the kit and read it. Um, oh, Lona, the beak's the firmest you've ever felted anything. Oh, that's interesting. I'm now worrying that maybe I've not felted it firmly. Enough. But I'm going over it again, you know, with the different colours. So it will get firmer and firmer. But it makes sense to have it more firm, for sure. Yeah, so remember the black portion should bulge out, which mine do not enough, so we'll do that. So this is cool, just kind of adding bits to it as we go along and trying to make it symmetrical, which I never make anything symmetrical. I'm awful for having slightly squint eyes, not, per well, I think personally as well, but having slightly squint eyes and just everything a little not symmetrical. I can't wait to see everybody's puffins though. This is a totally different project. But well, what what did I say we've got coming up next? Next month is three pigs and we've got a pony and we've got elephants. So it's gonna be a fun fun month. I don't know how the ladies come up with all these brilliant ideas. For all different animals but I definitely definitely going to do a curly horse at some point <laughs> right and yeah to prove my lack of symmetry one side is most definitely bulging out more than the other we'll have to build that up even more in a second get a bit more I'm probably going to lose an eyeball to this wire. <laughs> See, when you thought it was danger felting before with me felting in the air, it's even more dangerous with me felting with a free bit of wire. <laughs> I couldn't see where I'd put the little feet because they are the most darling things ever. Um, yeah, we used those feet for the chicken last year, didn't we? Um, so they're very, very cool for any birds you wanna you wanna make because it is super fiddly to make your own feet. I've done it a few times. I've not done many birds, but I've done a few times. Uh... Oh, Alicia! On Tuesday the twenty seventh, they're making a pig stay for the piggies. Oh, that sounds so cute! Yes, I will definitely have to try and catch that. That sounds adorable. I'm kind of losing the semi, the curved shape of this, but I'll sort it out. Yeah, I, well, I can't wait to see the pig stay for the piggies. Then I assume that's in structural belts. I don't know. I might belt it if if the antihistamines actually kick in and start working. I might be able to use the structural felt again. Um, but 
and so I've got leftover from the cat. I didn't, I didn't get rid of that, so I could do piggy thing. <laughs> but yes, that'll be adorable. So everyone, don't forget to check out the the pig stay on the YouTube channel. That will be so, so. And what a great idea to do the kit and then have like the extras you can do on the videos later. Clever. <laughs> Right, that's looking a little more symmetrical. I am lost the gap of white there and it's not quite the shape it's supposed to be, but we'll work on that later. It's so weird now that I'm I'm allowed to have this felted firmly. I'm rushing through and not felting it so firmly, whereas everything else I've felted like way more firmly than I'm supposed to. Um, oh, Alicia, yes, you're going to use the cat bed stuff for the pig sty as well. How many people actually made the cat beds? Poor poor cats with no bed. Um, but it's I, I think it's adorable anyway. If, if anyone doesn't know what I'm on about the the sleeping cat was last month's project um which comes with its own bed um to sleep on a project to make its own bed but i skipped we were we were super behind with with the month anyway but also the structural stuff is so clever and wonderful but my allergies are so annoying <laughs> so i just decided to skip it yeah Oh, Lorna, you're skipping the piggies. I've still got two giraffes to finish. Yeah, giraffes are quite, quite intense projects. I think it took me about four or five days when I was making my World of Warcraft battle giraffe. Um, I think just his spots. Yeah, they are spots, you call them, um, on my giraffe. That took about four days. It was an epic project, <laughs> but really worth it. I, I was so chuffed with how my giraffe turned out. Um but yes, totally understand. Well, I don't understand skipping the piggies. The piggies <laughs> look adorable. But yeah, I understand how you can have too much, too much projects on the go. Yeah. So yeah, we we totally want to see the giraffes though. They will be really cool. Um, what strange things have people felted? Let's let let's have the list. Um, I'm always looking for fun, different things to felt. Um, I think it started when you know I did dogs cats foxes mice um and then when a customer first asked for the valet's black nose sheep and i was like that is so cute that has to be felted so i felted one of them um and then once i'd done that i was asked for jacob's sheep and everything elephants of course um but i'm trying to think what have i made this really well i suppose the strangest thing was my um, Lord Squiffy, the steampunk dog, because that came from a drawing, a, a drawing a friend had made, and did that with needle felting and polymer clay. That was great fun. Um, so that's about the strangest because it's it's not real. It's from a cartoon. <laughs> Um, but yeah, what's what have you made that's the strangest or most cha oh most challenging? I did a cheetah or a leopard one or the other and oh my goodness it was only it's about yay big um hang on i can measure it's about it's about 13 14 centimeters big but oh boy the spots were an absolute nightmare to do that took forever um right okay Ooh. We're, we're sort of getting there um from the large main portion Take a wisp of the white and a wisp of the golden yellow to make a light yellow, which is going to be added between the orange and the black. And the orange goes goes around the base, but the top remains. The yellow goes around the base, but the orange remains on top. Yeah, cool. Um. 
and yet the makers have a tutorial on how to mix wool on the website if you're doing a large amount i have a tutorial on how to use dog brushes um card um not card slicker brushes as a rather than um, buying expensive carding brushes because they're practically the same thing. So if you're, if you're blending more than this amount of colour, then totally, and I think so many of us have pets and everything, so you probably have a slicker br brush laying around. So clean it up. Two slicker brushes, really quick, easy way to blend colours. Um, Oh, Alicia, the kitten in the basket is, is already a, a pack. They worked quickly. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in doing the kitten, she was great fun. Um, Lorna, you made the cat bed. Is a portrait of my cat's prince. He has to have something to sleep in. Fair enough. Um, my cat's sleeping on Santa's belly just now. <laughs> um, just the way it worked out. Um, right. Okay, it's not totally blended, but it, it'll do. So we're going to sort of narrower at the top because it's following the black. I do like the way these kits are giving us like a little practice of blending little things because the makers could have easily just said do it in that yellow. That's a cool yellow or, you know, given us a different coloured yellow to, to do it in. But no, they give us a little practice at. Oh, that's cute! And they give us a little practice at blending colours, which is cool. Um... Oh, <laughs> see what I did there. <laughs> Yeah, so if you went up too far to the edges with the orange, it doesn't matter because you're covering it with the yellow. So <laughs> me not leaving the little white bit worked out perfectly. Um, Alicia, the strangest thing I've made needle felting is Kevin the carrot. <laughs> it's hilarious. Not hard to do, but weird. I, yeah, carrots. I suppose I did felt an avocado, didn't I? In my Christmas collection. That that's random, yeah. Um, I dawn the strangest thing was a griffalo, all the tiny spikes on his back. Oh, see, sometimes we we see a project and we think, oh, that's a great idea, and then you realise that no, that's not a great idea. So much work. I'm trying to get this nice and smooth. Rose, hi there. Um, <laughs> late as always. Not at all. Good to see you here anyway. Um, we're just working on the puffing. <laughs> I've got nearly an hour done and this is this is all we've got to. <laughs> but no hurry, we've got a couple more weeks of this project anyway, so fingers crossed. Uh, Pamela, your strangest things, eyeballs and dragon eyeballs are my strangest today. <laughs> <laughs> well, dragons need eyeballs, so not so strange. I'm just going to colour in this top a little bit more because it's to reach the black here. There we go. Um, oh, Rose is also waiting for for her puffin to arrive. Oh, hopefully, hopefully soon. Are you in the states as well, or? a later date with a kit yeah I, when i first started with this I'd, I'd ordered and i ordered i started up quite near the end of the month meaning to get the next month but um, my order was coming in late which meant i was starting off when you were all finishing up so i just asked could i get the <laughs> could i could i get this get it at the beginning of the month instead of the end so we get we get a chance to work together um Diana, my dragon had spikes right down to his tail tip. To, okay, oh yeah, they really do. I've thought of ways to make spikes and scales and things easier, but I never get around to doing it. Um, oh, Dawn, it was a commission. Once made, she didn't want it. Oh, that is rubbish. That was the Gruffalo, wasn't it, that Dawn made? Um, Dawn, 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 Dawn. Yes, the Gruffalo. That's 
so for, see for anyone taking commissions and things i made this mistake in the past as well um but i always make sure and get the money up front now um so they're <laughs> they they pay the money i do the work and then i give them options you know for me to work on it to change it and i've only i think twice had people that really didn't want it after that but if they pay up front then they're more sort of committed to the process as it were um but yes just just twice both very rude people but it was fine because <laughs> i came on here and had a rant about them um and then put up the sculptures on ebay and made and made the money that way um, but it's not something that's happened very often um okay put it in the frame pam um add a dusting of white wool to the front of the orange the beak part almost like a marbled effect so keep it really thin Ooh, I'm not... okay so it's kind of like lines down it okay <laughs> the front of the orange beak concentrating again <laughs> oops, oops. That's definitely a bit thicker on one side than the other anyway um Pamela, just the eyeballs, mostly bloodshot. Oh, I did. I I forgot. I did needle felted eyeballs once, didn't I? Um, yeah. If you're wanting bloodshot, um, I have a tutorial for that. Um, but to make the the veins in eyeballs, if you're going for something, why am I doing that? Questiony, voicey. <laughs> to make the veins in eyeballs, if you're going for the bloodshot kind of Halloween thing what i found works super well is if you get some red um yarn red wool and unravel it just in little bits so you unravel like a tree if you know what i mean so you've got the thing say it's like four ply so you unravel it to two ply so you've got a four ply goes to two ply goes to one ply and because it's all curled it, it leaves fabulous veininess <laughs> it's really cool to do um so yeah, I had great fun with that. Um, roses in the USA, yeah. Hopefully your kit will get there soon. Yep, Michelle's just arrived in the mail. Fantastic. Um, Alicia, you should say up front that you'll keep half the money even if they choose not to take the the item as your effort they have to pay for too. Yeah, um, I just I just tell them to pay up front and I'll keep working until they're happy with it. Um, and generally like two or three rounds of changes if they're particularly particular or have not done great um, i'm totally happy with people wanting some changes but um yeah i don't I, I don't say that they they get an option to not have it it's just a couple of times people have really got on my wick and i decided they weren't i could have stuck to my guns but i was like no you're not getting my sculptures anymore I'm not playing with you. <laughs> um, Lorna, you needle felted a hippopop hippo hippopotamus. Fantastic. I've, I've kind of I've wanted to do one forever. I'm not sure how to do the skin colour, you know, the shading for it. Um, then mix tiny wisps of black with white and add a Okay, so that sort of goes up the middle. <laughs> um, but white's going to go over the top of this as well. <laughs> so it looks like a sort of line. So very tiny amounts. And it kind of goes up this way. I think I'm reading... Guys, let me know if I'm reading this wrong. But I think that's what it is. Yeah. Checking symmetry. Get the symmetry right, Pam. Uh, so it's like a line, but it's not quite like a line. Um, 
Oh, Pamela, yes, it, it was my tutorial that inspired your bowls, <laughs> your your eyeballs, yes. Um... <laughs> oh, Pamela, on your list is a slow leak, a leak riding a turtle. That's brilliant. <laughs> cool. Um, take a wisp of black, twist it, making a thin thread of black. Um, lay it on the beak in a downward curve Ooh. and that seems to go almost all the way up to the yellow that's so cute okay this is where i definitely won't get it even but we'll start just about there That's so cute. Um, now repeat on the other side. Um, and try and keep it symmetrical. Yields. Um, we'll try. Okay, it meets at the front and curves to about there. Oh, I'm still on camera. That's that's pretty good for me. I so see if anyone else does like videos and things. So many times I'm felting something, and I'm trying to show it on camera, and I'll be like thinking to myself, and it's totally off camera. I need a cameraman. <laughs> but that would be a terribly boring job. Just sit while I like felt something for four hours, just to have to try and capture bits. You're sort of symmetrical. That's, that's not bad for me. Tidy some of this up. And yeah, so even if you haven't felted this super firmly, as you're going along, adding the colours and then adding the lines and stuff, it does get pretty firmly and firmly pretty firm anyway so that's working and i will keep on going back over it because i know that's what i do um diana the lines are curved cool thank you um dawn the thing is she loved the gruffalo just didn't want to pay the price even though it took a week to make and was 10 inches plus you made a wolf uh, you made a mouse he did get sold eventually oh well that that worked out good but yeah just totally charge them before you start work and it, it's a difficult thing i actually do have a video on the slab um about selling fan art and copy work things um quite often people have contacted me asking if i'll make various characters and things and in general we can't it's it's a total pain um so but you're you're not going to get like get hit for having a gruffalo um as a one-off thing but yeah unfortunately we can't actually do these things even though it is great fun um next just under one quarter of well, that would be about that much um and roll it into a ball shape and then you're supposed to insert the wool but i can't do that because i haven't cut this so um so let's just totally go off piste and put the wool up here and then felt <laughs> felt a ball and then i'll trim the <laughs> the wire later um, this is not the easiest way to do this but I just didn't have snippies um, snippy. that's the technical term snippies so there's some awesome advice how to do this properly totally read the tutorial and don't follow what Pam does <laughs> Uh, while we're here again, I will quickly, you go away, you go out, 
Uh, so I just want to talk about the sponsor of our stream for everyone who missed it. Today we're sponsored by Amazon Music. If you click the link that should be hopefully popping up in the chat or in the description below, uh, you'll get three months free of Amazon Music Unlimited, which is... <coughs> great sponsored uh, hundreds of different artists and also it works with Alexa so you can voice activate your music and everything I believe it's $7.99 afterwards but you can cancel anytime in the three months and not pay anything um, that is an affiliate link so I do get um, I do get a little bit of commission if you click on that but it doesn't cost you anything um so yeah if you're interested in amazon music there it is <laughs> um, there we go that's our sponsorness right back to this uh, that's the right thing um <laughs> I know Diana felt the ball first. I know, but no, I don't do what I'm told. <laughs> but everyone else do what you're told. Um, Alicia, you need the rest of the wire. Yes, I will fetch the rest of the wire out once I'm downstairs and I have the wire cutters. <laughs> um, don't worry, I totally, I totally will. I just wanted to make the ball. I could have actually made the ball and, as Diana says, I could have made the ball and slid it up the wire, but... Um, I just wanted to break the rules. Yep, <laughs> Alicia Pam doesn't follow the directions. In in my defence, it's not entirely my fault this time. I just didn't have wire cutters up upstairs with me, and the wires too too strong for me little scissors. So I've got a large a large tail of wire that I'll just <laughs> I'll cut up later. Yeah, the rest of the wires for the feet. Fair. Fair enough. I'm confused, but the feet will be next week anyway. Um, which is cool. You guys all said it took you like a whole Zoom to do his beak. So I'm taking the same amount of time. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'm intrigued how that's all going to work out. Ooh, I'm going to ask in my community post anyway, but I think I'll ask you guys as well, because I know a lot of you sell. I'm looking for what's your biggest, biggest questions about Etsy SEO. Just hit me up with your biggest questions, because I'm looking. Oh, the wire's just poking out his nose. Um, I'm looking to hopefully be able to figure out what everyone's biggest pain points are and really, really help everyone out. And the other thing. <laughs> I, I did this absolutely ages ago when I just had a little following, so it, it, it didn't work so great. But would people be interested in like a live stream sometimes? But not the Sunday one, because we've got the felty one. Would be interested in like shop reviews and stuff um, where I, I go on and look at your shop and we all try and help each other. You know, I show you how, how I how i audit a shop and you know we can all help each other with what what you can improve would that be something that people would be interested in it's not a advertising section you know it's not it's not for getting sales or anything but it will just hopefully help you to get get a little bit of help if anybody's interested in that i might add that but yeah in the chat let me know your your top etsy seo confusions gripes questions um for and let, let me know if you do sell on etsy i know if you you do um if you're thinking about selling on etsy or if you don't sell on etsy why why don't you sell on etsy um let me know all of this um and Hopefully it'll help me focus on what everybody needs, what advice and what help everybody needs. Um, and then I can make better better videos that are more useful for everybody. Um, and also, if, if I make them nice and easily, then I'll be able to free up time to make the curly haired horse. Really want to make the curly haired horse. Oh, and I've also got a pile of cats to finish making and... I was going to do an ultimate guide to felting needle felted dogs because that is the kind of thing I do. It is, it's in my, like for a year, I know I've had this like 
because all breeds of dogs are like super easy once you know the few rules of the different face shapes and different how to add hair and stuff and then you can make every single breed of dog really easily oh my computer just did a virus check um yeah so that is that is on the plan but i just literally don't have haven't got around to doing all of these things so they're all in the plan and if i can do my eatsy videos easier then <laughs> i'll have more time to do the other kind of videos <laughs> that that's the plan anyway and I've probably said all this and you're all sitting there going, no, none of us sell on Etsy anymore. We decided it's no good. <laughs> oh, Lorna decided to make a different puffin species as you've already made the Atlantic puffin. Ah, good thinking. See, see it's not just me that goes off piste. Lorna's doing something different too. So I'm seeing this and I really want to make a parrot now. <laughs> <laughs> and the puffin's nothing like a parrot, but I'm just seeing the beak and stuff. And, oh, and a toucan. You know, like the Guinness. Does everyone know what I mean when I say the Guinness adverts? I really want to make a toucan now. I really want 100 extra hours in the day. Should, we should totally do a toucan together at some point. Um, Eva, I'd love to sell, but I'm pretty new to felting yet. So I think my stuff isn't good enough yet. I made my first sale, not on Etsy, but I made my first sale within weeks of starting felting. Um, the, th the thing is, to get good enough, you have to make lots of stuff. To make lots of stuff, you have to you have to practice, and to practice, you need the time and the money to be able to do that. So it's much easier if you're making, you know, if you're making stuff to sell. Um, I'm sure. Like, Eva, you've been doing it a wee while. I'm sure you would be absolutely fine at it. Because the thing is, you know, even I've seen people who've, like, their very first project is way better than any of mine have ever been. And even, you know, even if you're going to improve a load over the next few years, you're still going to have, you still have your own style and still some of the first things can be adorable. Um, and right confessions for anyone who's looking to sell online and stuff it takes it takes time to build up regularly so if your plan is in the future to do to do this as a business or a side hustle or something else if that's your plan for the future i would start now because the biggest thing to be able to make lots of sales or any sales is time so if you start off um you know, if you start off just now, then the time, the clock's already started. Um, Alicia doesn't sell on Etsy or any platform. Fair enough. Um, I I think it, it helped me become a better felter that I was so skint that I needed to try and sell things. <laughs> um, but it's it's also lovely to be able to, you know, not have the pressure of having to make it commercial. I mean, it is stressful sometimes. Like, every single time when i'm making something for a customer it takes me forever i make the item i photograph the item and then i sit on my fingers and i don't want to send them the photographs to ask them if they like it because i'm always worried that they're going to hate it so, <laughs> yeah um Bridget, I'd like to sell on Etsy, but I feel it's too much pressure Don't because I don't know how much it costs to maintain my shop if I'm not making any sales. Pretty much nothing. That's the good thing about Etsy. Um, there, don't switch the ads on, but basically it costs you 20 cents to put up one listing for four months. Um, and if it doesn't sell, it doesn't cost you a penny more. So that's, that's your only cost if you're not selling is 20 cents for every listing you want to put up um and as for needle filters it takes a bit of a time to build up a inventory anyway so you know list one or two things a week you're not even it's not even a dollar a week there's no other there's no other fees until you sell totally look into how much the fees are i would i would start off with always to whatever you feel you need to make from selling your item 
add 20% more for fees and everything and then you, you should be all right and don't switch on the ads. Um, Carol, you have an Etsy shop but find it stressful adding each item, photo tagging, description, then the fees. Um, actually, I've got a few items. I've, I've got a range that I'm going to release at some point once I've finished it. Um, so if it would help people, I can totally go through just step by step myself creating a list and, you know, all the things because it's really not. You don't have to be perfect. It's really not all that difficult. I'm happy to take you all step by step through how I do that if you want to see that sometime. Um, yeah. And then, you know, once you've done it, there's a magic button on Etsy called duplicate listing. So once you've got one, you just hit the duplicate. That makes another listing. You just change the photographs and tweak the title a wee bit. But it, it's still a needle felted thing. There's not much difference to, <laughs> to tweak. Um, There's birds nesting in my roof just now. I should get someone to get rid of them, but there's birds nesting in my roof. They're, they're having babies in, in my loft, pretty much. Um, Diana doesn't sell any of your felt make, makes. Some are not good enough. And those that are, I couldn't bear to part with them. I, yeah, I totally know that. Um, if once you're proud of them you want to stick with them but the thing is once you make more more and more then you end up like totally filling your house with them so you do need to make up space um eva the pricing is difficult I'd like to know what things to make that sell uh, i could yeah i could totally talk about pricing and stuff especially for needle felted things <laughs> i'm an expert on that <laughs> no what what i will say see for the pricing the simple thing the simple simple thing but i'd been told all sorts of ways of pricing things there's the business way of pricing things which is the cost of the materials plus your time times four or something like no one's going to pay that not for craft um so you know none of that kind of works and um, then there's looking at what other people charge but some people don't need the money and they don't charge very much at all some people have avid followings and charge a fortune art is really subjective to what people will pay so what you've got to do is decide first of all why are you selling do you want to do you need to make a business out of this do you need to make a living out of it then you have to figure out what kind of hourly rate you would need to make to to pay all your bills and everything to, to i mean oh that's my watch telling me i need to i've been sitting down for an hour <laughs> um a new fitness band um anyway so yeah so figure out what you're going to need and then figure out roughly how long it takes to make a certain thing and then that's going to be your price in reality raw materials for needle felting aren't much but you add on your little bit there and then i'd add on the 20 percent for etsy fees that should be enough to keep you right um but at the same time if you're not if you're just starting out and you just want to sell stuff to clear it out to make a bit of space to be able to buy new stuff to be able to create some more then just you know look at what you think you need for that but what i'd heard and what totally worked for me there there was the, the thing that really kind of blew up my shop and really got me moving was there was a a gallery in the village my mum lives in and she wanted to take some of my items and she asked for 35 needle felted dogs in i think it was like three weeks or something i was like thankfully i had some already but so i was working flat out and the price now the gallery they'll take it for less than what your etsy shop is because they've got to mark things up anyway but so it was the price it was making for the dog so i looked into i was working like all day till two in the morning felt in dogs and i looked at the amount that i would have earned for doing all of that and then just figured out is that a good enough hourly rate you know if you're going to give up 12 14 hours of your day on a super busy busy day would you do that would you work ooh, would you work 14 hours for a stranger for a pound an hour 
definitely not. You know, how much is that amount of your time worth to give up that time that you could spend with your family or go out with friends or go for a walk or play with the puppy? <laughs> how much is that time worth to work for a stranger? So that's that's how I see pricing. Um, and then that was a super low price reasonably low price but I was kind of happy with it and then over the years every time I've got to the point where I've made so much so many sales that I was struggling I just kind of put my prices up a bit and yeah at Christmas this year I know I have money coming from plenty of other sources so I wanted to slow down so I can make everything a little bit better make my packaging nicer you know the the maker's boxes gave me an idea of the experience it can be when you open a box I'm actually going to just make some leaflets to go into my boxes and things too so it's an exciting experience so I put my prices up enough so that I can take my time to do this if that makes sense um so there we go a little rant about pricing <laughs> um and to know what things to make that sell. Um, I do have a video that I would totally, if you're thinking about it, I'd just totally show you step by step. It's just go to my channel. You're, you're on here, but just go to the channel page, Pam Duffy, and it should be the, the video that you see first. Um, and it's a full step by step guide. It's not needle felting stuff, but it was how you know showing how to do keyword research to find ideas of what to make um and i'll go through things like that again um yeah i hope <laughs> i hope that little rant off to the side helps um mum <laughs> hey there mum if we all waited till we thought our work was good enough we'd never sell <coughs> she's right you know <laughs> it's it's not often my my mum's right but she's right again <laughs> she's far enough away she can't hit me Gwen, hello there. Sorry I'm late. No problem. Oh, you had a bit of a headache. I'm sorry. I hope you're feeling a bit better. That's awful. Uh, Lorna, I'd like to sell my felted animals. I know people like them, but I feel people don't take me serious. Well, you know, not ever like your friends and stuff that you're seeing won't necessarily, they're not your target audience, but you have to take them seriously. You have to take your items seriously. And yeah, it it's tough to sell to start with but that doesn't mean your items aren't good enough or people don't take them seriously just the right people haven't seen them yet um ever, it, it's much easier now when i started doing this no one knew what needle felting was now people do so there are followers who buy needle felted things in the past i was just having to think of sculptures and things um but you know there are people who buy needle felted things so that's a good place to start you know that you have collectors but you take your stuff but have you have you seen right sorry dawn but my little sister is a trained artist like she went to uni for it and stuff and the people that come out and are actually trained um are cocky they have they have the balls to stand up and say yes that that canvas that i sneezed on that is an one of a kind work of art whereas we would never have the balls to say that's a piece of art but they're able to stand up and go yes there there is value in that so that's You've worked hard, your critters, you say people like them, so there is a market for them, it's just not the people that are seeing them just now. Um, Alicia, it would be a great video series to do step-by-step -step setting up a store. I have done that a couple of years ago, but I can certainly certainly help out a bit as well, um, do a little bit more. Um, definitely, yeah, I'm... As I say, I've got some stuff that I'm wanting to, to launch, try and do some slightly different things, so I can totally take you all into doing that. Uh, Bridget, yes, you'd like a list. <laughs> um, Gwen likes, loves the puffin, it's so cute. Thank you. Yes, it's well, it's bizarre just now, but it'll get there. Well, it's, it's at the stage it's supposed to be at, isn't it? <laughs> it's, that's for sure. It's probably got a little bit too much yellow, but I like it. I can hide it anyway. Um, Lorna, find people don't want to pay for your time you put in. Yeah, they d it takes time to find the right people. Um, and there are people out there who want dirt cheap. Absolutely. And they don't value your work. They're not your customers. Don't sell to them. <laughs> it takes time to find the right people. But when you do, 
people are willing to pay. Um, look at some of the top needle felting sellers on Etsy. Some of those people take get a really good price for their items, like eye-wateringly really good price, and they get lots of sales. So, yeah, it is possible, but it just takes time. Um, uh, Carol, step by step would be great. Great, I will totally do this. It might take a few weeks because I've got to stop procrastinating and actually make my range, <laughs> make the range of items that I want to make, and then I will totally take you all through that. Um, yeah. And the yeah, duplicating listings is a lifesaver. It's so much easier. And um, you got as far as taking the photos. That is the most important step. So yeah, of it all, most important step. Um, Alicia's making a bug in a mug. Steffi will be making it on Tuesday on YouTube. Ah, oh, fantastic. Okay, if you want to check that out on the Makers YouTube channel. Um, oh, Diana's saying Lorna's animals are fantastic. I can't remember whose who stuff is it when I'm sitting here like this, but I'll, I'll take you with it. There you go. Diana says your stuff's fantastic. Believe in yourself. Look, guys, the... The worst thing that can happen is that people don't buy. That's not the worst thing. That's that's what happens to everybody. <laughs> um, even the best artist, it takes a while to get seen. So if if you want to do this, you totally can. But I'm not the best needle filter in the world by any by any strokes. And some of my early stuff was awful, but people still bought it. So. <laughs> Oh, go ahead and trying to learn how to crochet again. You forgot how. <laughs> oh, wow. Eva, um, thanks. This was interesting. Oh, thank you. I would love videos about how to make a shop on Etsy. Cool. I will definitely, I will definitely make some more. Um, uh, Bridget saying, Lorna and Diana love your felts are beautiful. There you go. See? You've got to believe in yourself. Um, Diana, I think you can charge too little for an item. Absolutely. People think if it's cheap, it's not good. Yeah, that's been a thing forever. People think if they're not getting sales, they have to drop the prices, drop the prices. But it's never, almost never that. Um, if, you're, if your items are cheap, people assume it's lesser quality. <sighs> I, I think I've said before, um, years ago when I made my first horse, and this is the, I made it and I didn't really want to sell it. I kind of loved it a bit. So I put it up for a ridiculous price. <coughs> I thought it was a ridiculous price at the time. I think it was about 100 quid. I sell stuff for that now, but at the time it was about four times the price of anything else in my shop. And it sold within the day because people valued, they were like, oh, what is that? That must be a quality thing. Um, it is daft, but yeah, people think, you know, if you value it, then they value it to an extent. So, yeah, totally. <laughs> you can go to to look. Um, Lorna, um, you went to art class, so you know how to sneeze on the canvas and sell. <laughs> um. Bridget, is there just one Etsy for the world or is it by country? Um, it, there's just one Etsy, but it does know what country you're in. Um, you, you can sell worldwide or you can choose to just sell in your location. I would say for anyone not in the US to sell worldwide. It's not. OK, shipping to America is more expensive, but it's not awful because um, our stuff is super light. <laughs> Um, and if you make relatively small things, it doesn't cost much to ship. Um, but we do get people get a sort of priority look. If they're in the UK, they're more likely to see stuff from the UK. So it, it's for the world, but you do get a little bonus in your own country. Um, but yeah, Bridget, join it. Join up and get a buyer's account. Any well, sorry, I'm try I'm costing you loads of money. This is where it costs, but you know, there's so much on there. You can you can buy loads of crafty stuff. Um, but yes, it's it's more worldwide. It's not like eBay where you really 
most people don't really sell worldwide on eBay. It is it is worldwide, but like you're going to see UK shops first if you're in the UK. Um, Gwen went to a few art classes and tried to go to college for art, but had issues finding classes that fit my schedule. Now, I'd be interested to see what what they actually teach at college and stuff. I am being rude, just, but you'll know what I mean. You've seen some art stuff that sells and you're just like, oh my goodness, but how much? <laughs> and there, there's some stuff that people do wonderful works of art that are amazing and just don't get the money for it. it it's quite a lot about confidence. If you can... and. I think once you've made a few sales, the thing is, it would be easy. I know my work isn't the entire best in the entire in the world, but over a thousand people have bought from me. So if someone comes and offers a ridiculously low price for it, I can stand my ground on behalf of all the people who've bought from me. I can say, no, you're not getting it for that cheap price, because that would that would be not fair on the people, and I value them more because they've paid me. If that makes kind of sense um oh diana used to sell teddy bears at big teddy bear fairs in london to the collectors they would pay almost anything for something they loved yeah i did a teddy bear fair a few years ago and my stuff didn't fit perfectly what the teddy bear collectors were wanting but it was interesting to see that teddy bear collectors will pay and yeah you totally can um Eva, so let's say you wanted to sell the bar now. How much would people sell it for? Oh, that's a good question. That's bigger than most of my other work, but I was following a pattern, a tutorial, and it's not as firmly felted, so I would probably put that in in my large category. Um, bar now. <laughs> um, it's not as detailed is cute but it's not how my work would normally be so i would probably sell that for about 90 quid um if at that size if i did it firmer and more i mean the wings are gorgeous <laughs> if i did it firmer and more detailed maybe about 150 quid but it took a wee while to build up to that um I'll show you, like my kind of prices. So for a custom work for <laughs> you can't really see the details in this, but something that this is my small size. And I started these off at it was 20 quid and now they're up to 50 quid for a custom piece of work at this size. Um and then slightly less if it's not custom work. Um that's that's roughly what I'm up to <coughs> as I say I started at 25 quid that was a good enough amount of money that I wasn't like right on the bottom <laughs> you know um some people sell for way more some people sell for way less that just worked for me I'm getting fluff <laughs> fluffing my lungs um Bridget yeah Australia is a lot smaller is that so I can set my shop up and come in there um <laughs> yeah uh gwen all the classes were late at night no or the campuses weren't near you and you can't drive and yeah it can be difficult uh rose do you sell the things you make during the video i don't sell the the items i make during the video because um i make these for fun this is this is my <laughs> this is my fun and it's also it's not although I don't think the makers mind you selling them, um, but it's not my my designs. It's not my work, really. Um, so I don't I don't sell these. I might I don't know one day to make make space. I might do some kind of I don't know giveaway or lucky box or something, but I don't sell these. Um, Artsy Burger. Hello there. What a fun name. Um, Bridget, got it right. Australia is a lot smaller population, so I can. So can I get my shop to be viewed by UK buyers? Yes, um, absolutely. Um, it, it takes a bit. 
you would you'd get seen more in Australia to start with, but then once you start to get sales, Etsy starts to realise that you're a good proposition, then you'd get seen more. <coughs> the thing with Etsy is because it's handmade and it's made just for them, they will wait longer for shipping than if I buy something from eBay and it's coming from China, I'm raging. But Etsy, happy to wait. Eva just said that because the back the bar now. I'm a bit I'm a bit scared because people don't want to pay that much, but it's nice to know. Yeah, that's why I started smaller. <laughs> um, it worked well for me. The big sizes, that's the really good artists that can command two, three, four hundred pounds for a sale. So I that's why I went with going much smaller because I can't. I couldn't compete with them in my skill level, but going small is cute. It's much quicker to make and it just, I was able to get a price. As I say, I started off at 25 quid and then I was able to move up. Um, so, but it depends. I mean, people have, you just have to wait. The, the thing is, if it's bigger and it costs more, it'll take longer to sell, but it still will be able to sell. Um, I just got a, message if ever anyone remembers wendy who used to hang out in the chat she made a gorgeous giant santa claus and we helped her price that and she told me he did sell at the price that she thought was ridiculously high um alicia yeah i should sell them for charity that's a good idea um artsy love how it looks thank you um thanks alicia yeah i thought that's what it would be you can sell any of them makers items you make um you just can't sell the directions yeah and kits you make yeah <laughs> yeah totally makes sense so the makers are fine for you to sell your bar now but they're not fine for you to make a kit of a bar now <laughs> and sell it a, a kit of a bar now using their directions that kind of thing yeah okay guys i think i'm gonna leave you to it i've got to go and trim the <sighs> get the wire out of this guy um, um but yeah thank you all for hanging out it's given me some food for thought and videos that i can do to hopefully help you guys more because I, I seem to have i've got like a split i've got the needle felters and then i've got the people that sell online and my i i'd always hoped it would be a together thing i would be helping needle felters sell online if that makes sense um so and i'm totally happy to help anybody sell online and help anybody with their craft but i i thought there would be much more crossover <laughs> um because yeah it's 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 a passion i i know about selling needle felting but anyway right guys rambling um you guys have an awesome week and i'll see you next week thank you so much